In this video, I want to show you how you can use the power of CSS to build styled and interactive FrameRx components. So to demonstrate that, we're going to create a floating action button like this one. It has nice pulse animation that draws attention to it, it stops animating and scales up when we hover over it, and it's built using just CSS. You can check the video description below if you want to download the finished project. When we work with code components in FrameRx, or any React components in general, it's a common practice to use a library that allows to write CSS directly inside JavaScript code. And there are multiple options out there, but the one that is more powerful and most commonly used is called Styled Components, so we're going to use it in this video. We're going to start with the blank project, and the first thing that we want to do is save it as a folder. By default, FrameRx saves project as a single file, but that makes it a little more difficult to install code dependencies. So I'm going to go to the file menu, hold down the option key, and then click on save as menu. In the dialog, I'm gonna name the project fab for float in action button, and under file format, drop down, I want to choose FrameRx folder. Then I can click save and we can ignore the pop-up message. Next, we need to install styled components library. So I'm going to open a new terminal window by pressing command space and typing terminal. Now we need to change the working directory into our project folder. And the easiest way to do that is to type cd space, and then we can just drag and drop our file into the terminal window and then hit enter. To install packages, you need to have a utility library called Yarn installed on your laptop. If you don't have it, just visit Yarn website and follow the installation instructions, which is basically just running brew install Yarn inside your terminal window. Once you have Yarn installed, we can type Yarn add styled components which will install the library itself. And then we can also type yarn add dash capital D types styled components to install type definitions for this library. Now we can switch back to FrameRx and start working on our code component. So I'm going to create a new code component called button and I'm gonna remove most of the stuff that FrameRx created for us. Next, I'm going to import styled components library that we've just installed. To create a new styled component, I'm going to create a new variable called button component, which will be a styled button, and then we pass the string that will contain all the CSS that we want to apply to this component. Unfortunately, we cannot export this component directly in FrameRx, so instead we're going to use the export function button that we have down here, and from it we'll just return our button component. Now we can set some basic styling for our button component using CSS. I'm going to add a background color with the RGB color with values 216, 46, 171. And I'm going to set width and height of the component to 100%. I'm going to set border to none to remove the default border that is applied to all button components. And then I'll set border radius to 50% to make it a circle. To see how it looks, I'm going to switch back to the canvas view. I'm going to create a new iPhone 8 frame, and then I'm gonna go to the components tab, and I'm gonna drag in our button components. Uh, it's a little too big, so I'm going to set the width and height to 60, and let's constrain it to the right and to the bottom at 30 pixels. 
now we can open a preview window and lock it on top so we can always see the changes that we apply. So let's switch back to the code tab and now make this button scale up when we hover over it. To do that, we can use a pseudo selector called hover. So when we hover, we want to transform our component and the transformation that we want to apply is called scale and we're going to scale to 1.2. Now, as you can see, when we hover over the component, it does scale up, but it looks pretty ugly because there is no smooth transition to this uh, bigger state. So let's fix that. To do this, we're going to add transition property to our component, which will apply to all transform properties. It will take 0.3 seconds to complete and we're going to use ease out easing to make it look more natural. Now it looks way better. Finally, let's add pulse animation to our button. It's going to be a keyframe based animation. So for that, I'm going to import keyframes from style components package and then I'm going to define our pulse animation like this. These keyframes use box shadow property to create outer rings for our button that use the same color that we applied for the button but with a different transparency which basically decays from 0 to 70 percent and then there is 30 percent uh, delay period to make this animation look more natural. Now we just need to apply this animation by using animation property and we're going to pass our pulse animation which is going to last for two seconds and it's gonna repeat infinitely. We also want to cancel this animation when we hover over button so we're gonna use animation none for the hover state. And as you can see, our animation is already working. There is a nice pulse ring outside of the button and when we hover over it, it scales up and pulsation stops. So hopefully this tutorial gives you an idea of how you can start using your CSS knowledge to build more interactive and better looking components inside of Framer. So if you found this video helpful, click that like button, subscribe to the channel to get more FrameRx tutorials, and if you have suggestions for the next video, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next one.